I love practical jokes. This is my best one ever. My buddy asked me to throw him a, 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 a bachelor party. And I was like, man, you don't want me to do that. I said, I'm a comedian. I always go for the laugh, and then I hope we can shake hands and be friends later. But I'm going to fuck up your day. And he was like, I don't think you'll do that. I said, I don't think you're listening. I'm already trying to decide how to fuck with you, so... Can we just, like, uh, not have me do it? And he was like, buddy, you've been to Vegas more than any of us. You planned the party, you get the girl. Now, look, I got him a girl for the end of his party. That's what he wanted, a stripper. I'm not a stripper guy. I never have been a stripper guy. I don't really care. But he wanted a stripper for the end of his party. That's cool. I wanted the beginning of the party to be for me. <laughs> and what did I want to watch? What do I like way more than strippers? I like weird shit. I don't know. Guys, if you're like, hey man, this is about to be some weird shit happening in an alley, I'll be like, I'm gonna fucking watch that. 100%, I love it. How weird? I wanted people walking out of his party like this. What the fuck just happened in there? Like, was some guy walking out with a limp? Like, why are my hands dirty? Like, weird shit, right? Where did I think I could find that? I went on Craigslist in Vegas. Oh, guys, I have never felt so horny and sad at the same time in my entire life. Scrolling through, scrolling through. It's all sex stuff. I don't want that. I want weird. And then weird jumped off the screen at me. This woman's advertisement was three words. That's it. And those three words were, I'll wrestle ya. And I was like, fuck yeah, you will. That at least deserves a phone call, I think, right? I call her on the phone. She is six foot 250. And her special skill is that she'll come over to your house, she'll get naked, and she'll toss you around for a little while. And I was like, well, what time can you get here? And I open the door, and she's legitimate six foot two fifty, right? And she's holding a foot long sub and twenty four buffalo wings. <laughs> Not kidding. And she waves them in my face, and she goes, "You got a room where I could go fuel up before the match?" And I was like, first of all, fuck yes, I do, right in there." And I said, second of all, you should know that the person you're wrestling today." doesn't know there's going to be a match. <laughs> you know, I don't know if that changes your professional approach at all. <laughs> so she goes off into her room. My buddy comes over and we've got him on a stool just like this one. And um, my other friends are standing behind him and we get him blindfolded. And he's, well, I don't want to ruin the surprise, you know. And he's like, oh, this chair is one Ralphie May away from an accident. I'll tell you that right now. Oh. <laughs> you don't think he knows he's 900 pounds? He fucking knows. Look at this. So, um, he's sitting there and he's like, <laughs> I'm so excited. And I was like, <laughs> me too. And he says, I'm ready. And I said, okay, and I call her out. Now, none of my other friends knew what I had planned. So when she walked out of that room naked, collectively, they were like, what the fuck? And as she got closer, I saw that she still had buffalo wing saws around her neck. I was going to get her a napkin, but I was like, I'm sorry, that shit is too funny on your face. I am so sorry. So she stands in front of him, six foot 250. Oh, I forgot to tell you the best part. My buddy, 5'8", and 140, and like a, like a, like a, hoo -hoo, like a soft 140, right? So the size difference alone, like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to fucking like it.
And he says, I'm ready. And I said, okay. And I take off his blindfold. And the only word he could get out of his mouth before she ripped him out of his chair was why? Right? And she lifted him up like this. His little feet were dangling in the air. And she started to toss him around the room like a rag doll. And we were all like, Guys, she would jump on top of him, and he had to push her fat out of his face to talk to us. He would be like, tell her to stop. How long is she going to be here? I can't breathe. Why does she smell like buffalo wings, right? There was one time where she was straddling him like this, beating him in the face with her titties, just... I don't think you're getting the right visual. Okay, uh... Guys, this isn't five foot two, 110 pound, bink, bink, titties. This is six foot, 250, just. <laughs> titties. That's how big her titties were. They made that noise through the air. It was like being hit with a tit missile, just. Dude had a swollen eye from titty punches. You've never seen that in the history of fucking never ever. I'll tell you that right now. So she thinks her job is done, right? She walks over here to this side of the room. My buddy gets up mad. You know when you can tell someone is mad where they never take their eyes off of that thing they're mad at? So he gets up and he walks away from her like this. And then something in him just snapped. And he just looks at her and he goes, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> and like a wave of calm crashed over her, like serious, like Bruce Lee, enter the dragon calm. She was just like, <sighs> and they ran at each other. Guys, you understand what's happening? They're fucking fighting for real now. It's the best gift I've ever given to myself ever. Are you kidding me? They're running at each other. I'm like, I don't even know how this is going to end. Oh my God. Right? They're running at each other and my buddy was mad. And he screamed, I want to take you down. Running at each other, full speed. And he ran into her. I'm going to tell you something. He really did try to take her down. I'll tell you what. He did not. Uh, all I can tell you is that when his little body hit hers, She kind of absorbed him for a second, and he disappeared. I was like, where the fuck did he go? And then she just boom, shot him out across the room. Boom, and he slid on the floor, and one of my friends ran up to him and went, that just fucking happened to you! And she was mad that he challenged her or something. So she goes to us, you want to see my finishing move? You want me to finish him? And I grew up with Hulk Hogan and Randy the Macho Man Savage. So I was like, you fucking finish him! I didn't know if she was coming off the top rope or dropping a leg or whatever. I wanted to see that shit, right? So she starts to run to him, and she was like, finish him, and we go, yeah! She goes, finishing move, and we go, yeah! And she goes, you want to see the finishing move? And we go, yeah! And then she sat on his head, and we went, no! <laughs> Not that finishing move, fuck! Guys, his little head disappeared. All you could see were his tiny arms slapping her back, like... Oh, it was a fight for life. I'm telling you that right now. It was the weirdest shit I've ever seen. It was like a reverse birth. It was fucked up. That's all I'm saying. And here's how you know you pulled a good practical joke. A good practical joke is a joke that continues to pay dividends long after the joke is over. So like a month and a half after the wedding, after the uh, uh, party, two weeks before the wedding, I ran into his dad. <laughs> and his dad goes, uh, hey, you're not coming to the wedding? I was uninvited to the wedding, by the way. Uh, <laughs> totally worth it, totally worth it. 
You guys want to see how he uninvited me? This is my favorite part. This is how he uninvited me. She just got off of him. And he stands up and he goes, You're not coming to the wedding! <laughs> so here's how his dad goes, You not coming to the wedding? I go, No. And he goes, why not? And I said, oh, uh... <laughs> Tim didn't tell you? And he said, no. And I go, uh... Well, do you got a couple minutes? Sit down, sit down. <laughs> and then his dad used that story as his best man speech at the wedding. <laughs> Fucking winner, winner. <laughs> 